before Marco unplugged his battery. Trying to move. Okay, good. So about me, this is boring. I'm doing this for a long time. I'm at Spryker for three plus years, which is a lot since company is five years old. And yeah, I did a lot of things in this time. So what we will learn, or what I'll try to present, some of the things is like how to place an order. Sounds ridiculous, but it's actually not that straightforward. Uh, something about step engine, why do we need in the first place, how to implement the step, and things on. We could be probably whole talk just about what we can show today, so let's move on. I think we should start with the quote. So what is quote for you who do not know anything about Spryker? When you add something to cart, we build a quote, which is basically a transfer object. And then we, through the checkout process, we add stuff based on the user input. And then we basically place order and destroy it. And it's persisted inside Redis by default or whatever strategy you pick. It can be database or whatever you want. And yeah, you can also invoke at any point of time some business logic to help you populate it. So what is checkout? I did use my amazing graphics design abilities to do these boxes. I'm not as good as Dan, who would draw this like very nicely in a comic, but so of course you have a controller with a section, you have a step engine, and then some other stuff, and basically the purpose of this talk is to demystify those black boxes, so that's basically what we're trying to do. So what is a step? Very simple, it's a class that implements step interface, and it's supposed to handle some data, very difficult, and since this is demystifying, let's go into and see what interface we're implementing. So there are some methods like precondition, require input, execute. I mean, you can all read, I don't want to read them for you. But yeah, sometimes it's a bit confusing. How do they work and what's the call? How is to sort this thing called? So precondition, as the name says, this is something that will turn true if you can actually access the step or turn false where where you cannot, and it will be redirected to escape route. And this is something I copied from B2C demo shop, so in preconditions check, okay, if cart is empty, we have nothing to do, and some other conditions, depending on the business logic you want to do. Then we have require input. So if you want step to stop here and ask for user input, we have to return true. And if we don't, then we return false. So for example, that was actually for customer steps. So if customers logged in, we know who the customer is, so we don't have to ask for name and first name and last name. So all talk is like this. So if somebody's super bored, you can go and grab a beer because it's like um, we have execute method, which is important because this is actually where the business logic happened. If there is some, I copied this uh, from the one of the most simple ones, and just add to the quote something. And, and this is where it's the business logic. And then we have post condition, which is sometimes tricky because people use it wrongly. Hello. And basically, this is the essential part because this is how Step Engine figures out where this step was completed or not. And so basically, if you return true, everything that was meant to be done in this step is done. And if you turn false, it will stop here and say, okay, you have to do something. Maybe some user input was not set or whatever. And this is important. I'll try to highlight, but it doesn't work on a screen. Do not modify the quote in post condition. This is what projects usually do. Then ends up in a very weird behaviors where checking your step. This is demystifying. Okay, since I want to have a complete this get template variable is not that super important, but basically, if you would like from the step itself to pass some variables to the to the uh, template that you want to display, you do it here. So, for example, in this case, you want to show I don't know, some cart items or whatever reason, and routes themselves are not super interesting. It's just one is the the route to the step itself, and one is what where you redirect if something goes wrong. So, so now I'm, I'm going to repeat these graphics 
several times to know what we're talking about. So we were talking about the step, and now we're going to talk about step collection, which is, so we're going bottoms up here. So, um, see, nobody's asleep, that's good. Uh, yeah, so st step collection is, has also this very nice interface um, with a lot of methods inside, but we're going to go through all of them because it's going to be a whole night here, just the most important one. And then why I'm showing this, because when you actually go to the, to the step engine, then it's going to be the whole code there with, that wire this up, so it then it makes sense because you have all the building. The most important is can you actually access the step, which name says the step engine will check if the step is actually accessible, and this is actually copied from the core. So we say, okay, we get the route, so if that's equal to the current step, or, or we will check if the steps were completed for that. And of course, current step is also important to actually do that. And you can see this when I show the whole step engine, um, where basically it's gonna go through all the steps before the current step, I mean the step, and see they're all completed. And if some of them not, then this will be the current steps. That, that's the whole C here. Post condition checking. So this is where the magic happens. Why should not put your business logic? Because the step engine will check if it was completed there. So you should not be modifying. Form collection. Again, my graphics are going to be several times today. So we've been through step, step collection. Now we're going to do form collection. Is yeah, of course, for for rendering form data binding, it has an interface, which is not super interesting. Um, but um, basically, the handle request is the most important. This is very simple. Symphony guys will know. You're going to go take all your forms and call handle request on each of them uh, to actually set the data and then hand the request. So, data providers that's a concept that we, Spryker Native, basically, where we how to provide additional options or to the forms that you want to render, like, for example, you want to get companies that you want to show in a drop down or whatever, addresses of a customer or something like that. And basically, also has an inter interface, which is get data and get options. Get options is very similar to what you have uh, uh, with the form itself. So I'm going to show this now. So get data is basically, if you want to modify the code somehow, uh, based on the, on the form input. So when you have something that's not direct data binding, we just want to do some logic to put it here. So in this case, for example, we set uh, this, ta this flag if billing is same as shipping, if they're the same, for example. Uh, this is actually copied from the shop. So, and get option is, for example, here we have address form and we want to just put all the countries and addresses Actually, for drop down, for example, to pick, this would be data container that's here. The, um, data container is very simple wrapper around quote persistence. And yeah, by default, it will be storing to Redis or DB, depending on strategy, but you can also implement your own. It's a very simple interface, just to have get and set, and then you work on that. Uh, not through magic, just like very, very layer, thin layer around. Step engine, finally, the most important part of the whole thing. It has amazingly complicated interface with one method called process. And so, um, yes, so workflow. So uh, then I'm going to show the code, so, but we have to walk through there. So we enter some step. We checked all the conditions if they pass through, right? Uh, then if, if you reach the current step, and then we say, OK, let's check precondition. Can we actually enter? Do we require input? Yes, show the form. The form is submitted, validate the data, and then you store data and run execute method. And then you also write post condition to see if you pass so basically all the steps that we explain. Um, this is like a happy part, and of course, if something is wrong, then you can, for example, if the if this form data was not properly submitted, then you do 
or frequent, then you just redirect or you just retry, depending on the logic. I'll try to show this. Let's see the code, which is, of course, more interesting than. And this is demystifying, which means uh, trying. So here we go. It's on GitHub, so you can have a look yourself. This is basically the same process in the code. So you have lots of laser pointing. It doesn't work on the screen. So you have like figure out the current step. Now we know because we had these methods before. We check all the preconditions of the step. We check if we can actually ask, uh, access this step. If you require input, if you require input, and then we do. Then we go. Wait, where is okay? It's going up. I zoom it too big, but uh, lots of checks, and then we just say, okay, a, the user has submitted the form. We do handler request here, and then we do execute, and that's pretty much it. Then get handle data. So the process that we described in the previous slide is basically seen in the code. It's all on GitHub, so you can have a look yourself, or, or just check out Riker. You can do this, right? Yes. Just don't sell it and don't make shops out of it. You're fine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, placing the order. I think that's the thing that's kind of sometimes missing. Like, we build the whole quote object, but this is not an order yet. So this ha needs to happen. And this is something is called this checkout workflow. And basically what happens, you submit a code we press submit order, and then request goes to Z. And, and basically, we have to transform this quote into order somehow. And for that is this checkout workflow, which has a very complicated interface that says place order. And, and basically, what we do here is like check precondition. I'm going to explain later. Um, Pre-save, do any actions. Actually save the order normally in database and do whatever you want to do after that. And that's the code. That's actually what I copied from the, from the, from the shop. So it's basically creates a transfer, checks all preconditions. Then we have like a stack of those plugins for that. Uh, do pre-save, which is again a stack of plugins to actually do pre-save actions. Do save orders, and again a stack of plugins. And then we run state machine because we have to start in the process. And do it again, you have a stack of plugins for post save. And so that's it. That's the whole code so we can do. And, and that's important. It's not big enough, but you only have 30 seconds because it happens on submit. So sometimes projects do this wrongly because they're trying to do too much. Instead of using the state machine, they try to do too much on the actually placing the order. And it's, it can be a problem. So I've seen this more than once on a project when they try to do way too many things here. So, um, so just for completeness, let's have a look of the interfaces that, so we have check condition, plugin interface, and basically just a very simple method that will accept quote and basically return true or false. So true, everything is fine, a false condition fail. We have pre-save. What would you do, like typically here, I just have to give some context because there's no example. I will check, for example, if the item is still available because somebody might have been in a, in a checkout for a very long time and the item is just not available anymore. Um, or something like this. <coughs> then have pre-save. Um, this is very typically like, what you do is like add additional information. For example, I don't know, usually we have these quote expanders where we add more data to the checkout, for example, for, their, for to the quote itself and then to be persistent with the order for whatever reason. Um, this is what you're gonna do here. Save order is basically where actually create an order. Uh, convert quote to order, it actually persists. So, and that's, uh, yeah, whatever. Usually you just have a bunch of database tables where you store everything uh, there. That's pretty much typical process. Um, and, and then you have post save. Um, I don't know why we named this execute hook, but 
is based because you see, right? Usually, I don't know, you, our use case is like send an email to somebody that uh, was filling out some voucher or something, so that's like something that we do here. But you can also do this in a step engine, which I will do, or step you know, state machine. Um, that summarizes the talk. So, questions? Yeah. I didn't swear once. Wait for it. <laughs> Any questions? Well, hope was not too boring, so that's <laughs> fine, right? So it's, uh, there must be questions. Dan, Dan has one. There you go. Wait, Yeah. Um, Step in. Can you sort of show us not the details? I mean, it might seem to be like a linear process where you here. Three functions and then the first one is the last one. Is there any way you can sort of force that process so it, it reads a select function um, which requires two additional steps? Can you sort of force the process? Um, so we have two strategies here. Like either you make sure the false condition there stops, for example, needs to be like whatever, set something, and then you say, okay, false, this has to be, and then this, so we have all the steps, plenty of them, and normal flow, all of them we pass through, but then for that particular use case, you have something in your code that will just say, okay, this has to be filled. This would be one scenario, or among some projects, we actually did two step collections, and then depending on a, on the, because we have very special flow for checked in user compared to whatever, and then we said, okay, let's just pick the other step engine or st step collection for that particular flow. So both things would work. Really depends what you like. Uh, one thing is maybe nicer because you have all of them in one place, but, but like if you don't, if you have issues like how to set post condition properly, then maybe. So I've seen the other one actually to have two separate or five, three separate collection of step actually more, I've seen it more often, so it's not wrong. You can do that too. So you could use like on step two, you could choose something and then skip the two steps and like. Okay, yeah, it would be like like having a tree or, yeah, we, uh, yeah. then I would have all of them in one collection and then just, and then just have post condition, make sure that it just stops. So it's like one, but you just skip steps that you don't have to do anything. So, okay. Okay. yeah, that would be one way. Yeah. The, more complex, then maybe you're doing too much in a checkout, right? So because you don't want to annoy your users to that, right? That's also something because people want to buy. Yeah. Thank you for a question. Right? That should make sense. So, anybody else? That everybody's an expert. That's good. Uh, how does the previous diagram to show the host uh, calculations? Yeah. Is well, I'll go back. Well, I mean, calculation is very, for example, one typical example, somebody picks a delivery method, for example, and you have just cost for that. So, of course, you do calculations on a, on a back end. Well, it really depends, like, for example, you just collect, like, first name and last name, there's nothing to calculate. But, yeah, for example, I know somebody picks payment method, and you might have different costs based on that, or somebody picks uh, uh, whatever some voucher discount, you can do that. <coughs> some big shipment method, so I don't know what the use case is, but yes, if whenever something requires you to to touch the price of the whole cart or modify it, then of course you have to call. Can you go back to the diagram? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's fine. It's the first <laughs> one, so yes, of course, I did a too many, too many. No, that's one too many. No. Here, so I mean, you can call it whatever. I mean, in your in your step, you pass the client that you need for that particular action, and then in your execute, you can just call it. So that that would be basic the correct flow would be. You don't care like on the interface method to invoke or manually the calculation. What is manual calculation? I'm sorry, just the. Inside the step interface, you want to have like force the calculate, for example, to basically show the outside world that you want to calculate. Well, I mean, we didn't. 
it's not part of the interface as I said sometimes you just collect user typing something like first time an email you don't want there is no need and of course it's a class and a class you can pass for there inject any dependence you want uh, and use it there and if you really want to extend the interface you can do that too but I mean it's all up to you just was never like designed this way because um, like I said sometimes you don't need to call Z and you basically try to avoid calling Z as much as possible because it takes it can be complex operation if nothing else you have to bootstrap and do the call remote to the network and you have to serialize and deserialize so you really want to annoy users as little as possible let them wait as little as possible so unless you really need to then but yeah of course if you do business logic you can use like real calculation or something then you should definitely call it should call there the Z for that so I don't know how to answer this more And also, we don't know what steps you're gonna have. Yeah. I really have no idea. <laughs> like, this is the most customized flow of every shop, and every shop has its own requirements. Some want to have as little as possible and then start merging all the steps in one. Some want to have, I don't know how many, so it's really, really hard to have like a universal process that would fit all. And like I said, you're very flexible in that. You can add more, you can remove, you can do pretty much whatever you want. So that's the whole point. It's not, because some shop system has like predefined places where you can interact with the checkout process and that's it. And that's one of the benefits that Striker has. It's logic, it's basically put this together for everyone. That's, because for example, just take, maybe you don't need delivery because they sell digital products. I don't know, some downloadable stuff. So you don't need delivery, you don't need shipping methods, you don't need addresses, you don't need pretty much anything, you just need an email or whatever and, and a credit card. So that would be one step. Or you are super complex B2B shop that needs I don't know what. And this is really, uh, it's something that you have to, um, I really don't know. Speak into the. You people will not hear you on a tape. So. Yeah, I mean, well, when you do, the, depending when you want to stop, so like. No, uh, I mean, the checkout controller for any step is just choosing the validate code, and the validate code goes to the declaration step. Good question, I don't know. <laughs> really? And then, then you know more than <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, um, I really don't know. Well, we can check the checkout controller, but we, <laughs> we should do that after, yeah. So if that's true, then, then, uh, then we might do some other logic here. So it's fine, not just validate, so, which is also fine. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah.